Hello, my name is Kimberly Henderson, and my video is about aphasia. Sounds, words, conversations, language. Language possesses the power of building borders between people while at the same time holding the capacity of destroying them. We use language every day to communicate and express ourselves. We use it not only to express our thoughts outwardly, but also internally. It is what separates us from other living creatures. But what happens when we can no longer communicate? What has happened to the brain when a person can no longer speak properly or understand language? Some of the culprits, brain tumors, traumatic brain injury, stroke, have the capacity to cause aphasia. Now the pending question is, what is aphasia? Aphasia is a language disorder that affects the understanding or the expression of language caused by brain damage, primarily in the brain, left brain hemisphere. Not only does aphasia affect speech, but it also affects reading and writing skills. Aphasia is the same across all languages, meaning it also affects sign language users. So the big underlying question is, can aphasia affect the language used to express inner thoughts, in other words, linguistic thinking? Before pursuing this question, one very important thing to remember is that aphasia does not affect intelligence. Now, to answer this question, we must delve further into what aphasia is and the different ways it can affect receptive and expressive abilities. There are two main types of aphasia, Wernicke's aphasia and Broca's aphasia. Both are due to a lesion or disruption in their corresponding area, Wernicke's area and Broca's area. These two areas are part of what is commonly referred to as the neural loop which basically is the loop that language processing follows to allow for a proper flow of information necessary in comprehending and producing language. Having an understanding of the process and functions of the neural loop is crucial in exploring the main question, as it will provide insight into the ways that it affects language and possibly thinking. The way this loop flows is that language input is first processed in the temporal lobe, specifically in the primary auditory area. Then information is sent to Wernicke's area, which has the job of interpreting or processing words into thoughts. Wernicke's area then transfers information to Broca's area in the frontal lobe. This is where speech production happens with the help of the motor area. Knowing what each part does facilitates an understanding both of these aphasias. In Wernicke's aphasia, again, Wernicke's area is disrupted, causing the subject to have difficulty understanding speech, and the person also has no idea what they are saying or that they even have a defect. What are you doing today? We stayed with the water over here at the moment and talked with the people over them over there. They're diving for them at the moment. They'll save in the moment. He'll have water very soon for him, with luck for him. The question is whether the way of speaking is a direct reflection of their thinking, or is their internal experience that of being around a foreign language. In Broca's aphasia, a subject has difficulty producing speech, speaking in a choppy manner, but having little to no difficulty in understanding it. And what happened to you? Um, stroke. Um, school and English class. Okay. And I um, book and I read it aloud. Again, is their thinking similar to their speaking? Could their mental experience be more of a tip of the tongue phenomena or is their thinking completely unaffected? Now hearing the two main types of aphasia, we can discuss whether aphasia affects the language they use to think. For starters, there are really no solid answers to this question, just possibilities. Two are, it depends on the type and the severity of the aphasia. As mentioned before, aphasia causes disruptions in the neural loop, so the effect on the fluidity of linguistic thinking could correlate with the type of aphasia. Possibly, the effect of linguistic thinking is that it affects the internal experience of language, such as constantly having the tip of the tongue feeling or the mental experience of being around a foreign language. But we can't fully be sure what the true answer is because this question dwells on more the mind than the brain. There is a reason why we have brain surgeons and not mind surgeons, because the mind is an intangible entity. 
There is still so much we have to uncover and learn about the mind. And as we begin to uncover answers, more questions will arise. So now the question is, what can we use to solve or better answer our aphasia question and other questions regarding the mind? Philosophy, neuroscience, math? Or is there another subject we are yet to discover? What do you think?